Hello YouTubers and welcome back for my latest video. This is Mike. Uh, so today I wanted to give you guys an overview of uh, some EK water blocks that I got here. Uh, these are for uh, my EVGA DTX 570s, uh, the HD version. Uh, these use a non-reference PCB. So these blocks are made specifically for this. Um, the part number is EK-FC570DTX-SE, SE being second edition, otherwise known as HD. Um, so, yeah, I wanted to give you guys a brief overview of the, of the block and the contents of, uh, that comes inside the box, and then I'll actually get into uh, installing it on the card. Alright, so before I get too deep into it, um, I know I'm going to get this question, so I might as well address it now. Um, yes, EK did have some problems with their blocks, and there were some corrosion issues with the nickel plating on their older blocks. Uh, but I do want to say that EK has um, addressed all of those issues. Uh, anyone who felt they had a defective product was able to return it for a replacement. And these blocks that I have with me now... Uh, use EK's new electroless nickel plating process which is supposed to prevent uh, any kind of issues that the older generation had. So we're going to open her on up here. Uh, I do want to say I love EK's uh, packaging. Uh, color coordinated and uh, very professional looking. Uh, so the first thing we get when we open up the box is uh, we've got some thermal pads here. Um, they are somewhat pre-cut, but you do have to cut them down a little bit more uh, to make them fit. And they do include a little bit more than you actually need in case you mess up and, you know, that's there for you. Uh, we got a little baggie of hardware here. Um, we'll go over that. I actually start installing the block. You get some very detailed pictured instructions which is very good. I like it. I need it. And finally we have the block itself. Which I can tell you is heavy. Uh, that's my first that's the first impression I got when I felt this thing was was uh, wow this thing was heavy. So I'm just gonna open her up here and take a quick look at it. <clears throat> And you will notice that uh, because of that new nickel plating process, this is not as mirror-like as the older blocks. But it is still pretty shiny there. You can see the camera. But it's it gives it more of a dark chrome look now with the new uh, plating. And uh, they do have a nickel plexi. This one is the nickel acetal version, the black acetal. Uh, it's actually just going to work out better for the color scheme I got going, in my, going on in my build, so that's why I went with this. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, so I just wanted to show it to you before I actually put it on the card. Uh, pretty much standard block uses G1 quarter threads. That's about it. Okay guys, so we're at my desk here now and I'm actually going to start getting into the process of uh, installing the black. And of course the first thing we got to do is get this old heat sink off of here. Um, I'm going to keep the camera recording the whole time I'm doing this, uh, but obviously some parts are going to be kind of boring, so I'm going to speed those along and then as I need to I'll explain things here and there. But uh Let's tear into it. I had used this screwdriver on the last card and it did fine but it's not doing so hot with this one and the last thing I want to do is strip these screws out so I went out to the garage and got my precision set 
hopefully we do a little bit better here. Finally, there's one last screw on the bracket. Once that's out, you should be able to get the heat sink off. And carefully, all I'm going to do is just kind of wiggle the heat sink back and forth. To get it to separate. Ooh. There it is. Oh, and the four pin fan power. Um, but that unplugged a lot easier than the last one did. But there she is. Reference heat sink. What I'm going to do now is take all these little pieces of thermal pads that are came on the reference heat sink and put them on here and then that way I can put it away for storage and if for some reason I ever do need to put the air heat, heat sink back on the card all the little thermal pads will still be there Alright, so we're going to put this air heat sink to the side. And now we got to clean the card up. A um, couple things for that is some Q-tips, a little bit of TP, and uh, some rubbing alcohol. Uh, they do make special solutions you can buy. I guess you could use it if you really want to, but... I know a lot of people just use plain old rubbing alcohol and it does the job great. GF 110. Uh, also, there is a little bit of residue left on uh, all the memory modules and the VRMs over here. So, I usually do clean that up a little bit. Alright, according to the instructions, it says uh, once it's clean, you got the stock heat sink removed, go ahead and cut up all the thermal pads and place them where they're supposed to be and then put your thermal compound on the uh, processor itself and then take your uh, bracket here, then secure your bracket to the PCB. But uh, the thing about that is if you put all your thermal pads on there first, and then you go to put this bracket on there you have to lift up the card and screw into the back to secure this bracket all your thermal pads are gonna fall everywhere if you do that so I'm gonna switch it up mount the bracket first and then put the thermal pads in place so there's a washer that is, that is included with this and uh, the orientation of this bracket here is important you can't just flip it anyway it does show you in the picture which way it needs to be and that's like that now to secure this bracket to the PCB you're going to use four of these uh, M3 by 4 screws and each one will need a washer
Alright, you don't have to really crank down on these, just snug is, is just fine for now. Alright, now I'm going to get into cutting up the uh, thermal pads and placing them where they need to be. Uh, we got two sets here. Uh, these are thicker than this little pack here. These are all for your memory and this is for all the uh, VRMs and stuff. And it tells you, it gives you a guide on, see all the ones, these are ones, where all the ones go. This is two, it tells you how to cut up this pad and where to place all of the uh, pads for this one. In addition um, to the thermal pad, EK does recommend that you do use a small drop of thermal compound on the uh, on each phase regulator to help promote um, to help improve the thermal performance of the block. So I'm gonna put a little bit of uh, thermal compound, and then I'll put the uh, thermal pad on. So I skipped through a lot of that uh, process of placing the thermal pads on there. Uh, I really didn't want to put you guys to sleep with that, but uh, finally got it done. Uh, so now I need to put some more thermal compound on the GPU itself, and uh, I'm just gonna. All I have with me right now is some uh, Gelid Solutions GC Extreme, so that's what I'll be using today. Now, before I put this on here, uh, I don't want to cause a whole lot of debate here. I know there's a lot of people, a lot of different people have their own certain way of doing this, you know, so. For the way I do it, you know, please don't chew my head off for the way I do it. This is just how I like to do it. Um, some people say, you know, dab in the middle. Some people say spread a little bit, dab, dab, dab. Some people say circle. Uh, EK themselves gives you uh, cross, 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 cross. Uh, I'm a spreader. I, you know, put a little bit on there. I'm probably all out. Yep, all out. And then spread. I'm going to have to open up that other tube. Because this is not enough. Alright, got the new tube open, so I'm going to add a little bit more. Alright, so I got the uh, nice thin layer of thermal compound there. Now I got to prep the block. There are mounting locations on the block here. The instructions tell you exactly where they need to go. Um, so we have 10 standoffs included with the hardware kit. You're only going to use 9 of them. Um, and it comes with a, a little wrench here. And all we're going to do is go around and screw all these little standoffs in. Alright, so got all the standoffs in there, tightened down. Now we get to get the uh, card on the block. Basically, I'm just going to ease this on down so it lines up. Make sure everything's lined up. 
And now we have nine more of these uh, M3 by four little screws. Each one gets a washer. And that's what we're gonna use to secure it down. All right, one final thing we got to do, uh, I guess I should have mentioned this a little bit earlier too, is there's one screw in the whole kit that's a little bit longer than all the rest, and that's going to be used to secure the I.O. bracket back to the PCB. As you can see here, obviously when we remo remove the reference heat sink, uh, we move that support there so this can slide around, so they do include um, a screw and a nut for it. And you're just going to thread it through and secure it with the nut underneath. Okay, so here we are, guys. Got the block fully installed on the EVGA GTX 570 HD Edition. All wrapped up. Looking pretty good. And uh, going to finish up the install. I've got, I've the, got the second uh, card right here. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to get these in the system and up and running, and uh, I'll report back with uh, the results on the temperatures. Uh, I do want to thank you for following along. I know this video has been a little bit long, uh, but I did want to put out a detailed, uh, in-depth uh, video on installing these blocks just for anyone who is curious. Uh, be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for more videos. Thank you.